Hello and welcome to the presentation of a review on deep learning based automatic lip reading by Carlos Santos, Antonio Cunha and Paul Quid. I am Carlos Santos, student of the Master in Electrical and Electronic Engineering at the Polytechnic of Leiria. Professors Antonio Cunha and Paul Quid are my supervisors. Across the ages, since human beings started talking, hearing abilities became more and more valuable. Hearing impairment, whether momentary or permanent, led to trying to infer what was being said by looking to the lips movements, as well as by non-verbal communication. Lip reading has many applications, such as speech recognition. At the personal level, as a teacher, I want my students to fully understand my words and sentences in order to learn as much as they can. Speech synthesizing enables people with aphonia, inability to speak, permanent or not, to be heard. Mouth rendering enables to create more perfect animations and enhances the performance of, for example, deep fake. Silent passwords allow to unlock a device, not loudly revealing the password. Deep reading also allows to give a go to understanding what was said in silent movies, commercial or domestic. Speech recognition under noisy conditions is also an application for lip reading. Isolation of individual speakers. It allows to try to understand who is saying what within a group of speakers. In a forensic study, lip reading can also be helpful. In order to resist to security attacks, Lip reading may also be used to have the legal user say some words or phrases towards the camera, disabling recorded videos as password hacking. As a complete novice in lip reading, the following questions arose. Which methods are more suitable for visual clues only? Automatic lip reading. Which methods are mainly used to support the analysis of lip reading data? Which methods are specifically studied with uh, the available datasets? And what challenges are still open for lip reading solutions? As a bit of history, the first person to work with and for hearing impaired people was Benedict Monk named Pedro Ponce de Leon in the 16th century. And finally, in 1984, Petagen applied artificial intelligence to a 2 bits grayscale video feed and, by comparing templates, trained the first automatic lip reading model. Results prior to 2018 show a features and classifier oriented model structure, a diversity in databases, and a recognition tasks revealing a higher accuracy rate in less complex objectives as digits or words than in sentences. Sentences are, of course, more complex than prone to ambiguities as homovisms. This slide represents the summary of the state of the art from 2018 to the present day. The available literature on the subject is vast in numbers to beginner or curious researcher. Surveys prior to 2018 refer diversified approaches originated from geologically distributed teams or individuals 
dedicated to automatically breathing. This state of the art, this survey contributes to a good starting point to approach the subject. The 21 referred articles were aligned as clusters for better understanding. The first cluster comprises the first two articles, starting with the ones that challenge it, the upper bound disease of deep reading, and the region of interest delimitation. Following the previous slide, the second cluster focuses on lip by lip segmentation and lip contouring. The third cluster focuses on feature selection and extraction, and the fourth cluster focuses on homovism disambiguation as a means to classification. As an example of resourcefulness is the idea of training to learn simple visems, and then study if this improves the ability to infer unseen words also as a way to learn new languages and new words. The final cluster is dedicated to the articles which accomplish it improvements in the model as a whole rather than focusing on particular aspects of the model. Finishing the summary is an article which challenges the robustness of automatic lip reading, attacking or disturbing the model's ability to classify by adding noise at the frame level. This is the representation of the traditional method when feature extraction was handcrafted. And this is the representation of the end-to-end -end method. The change is that as deep learning can learn deeper features, the traditional methods are only preferred to lesser complex objectives. By reading the literature, research trends emerge such as continuation of application of new methods as new ideas, considering the variety of research sources and even resources, the simplification of parts of the process. As an example of simplification stands attention. Attention in automatic lip reading mimics the idea that one can only dedicate one's attention to the size of a fingernail at an arm's length. The rest is viewed in low resolution. And the complication of parts of the process. Uh, by inputting also considerations of the full environment, of micro-expressions, of biometrics or contexts as a general. Answering the questions proposed earlier, end-to-end -end deep learning models resulting to attention-based LSTM or transformers are, at the present time, the more suitable methods for lip reading resorting to visual clues only and to support the analysis data. No specific methods are studied with available datasets and mailing challenges are still open, even from the times of Pedro Ponce de Leon as lighting conditions, as facial hair, as unseen words or unseen speakers. However, as there are two distinct training methods, one by training in parallel and the other in serial, what may happen when a model is trained by a method and then by the other. Does it matter 
which one is first. Can it be trained and retrained and retrained just by alternating the methods? Does the model improve by missing the weights? By making a module 17% of one weight and 30% of the other? What is the maximum? How does it matter? Uh, thank you for your attention and I will be available for your questions.